Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to look at some basic formulas within Microsoft Excel and I'm going to look at something called Absolute Cell Referencing and see how that will be useful for beginners in Excel and also moving forward. So this video is designed for people who have very little knowledge of Microsoft Excel. In this column here I want to work out the total value of this particular part. So I've got a price for the part and I've got the number that we've got in stock. So the value would be simply the value of the item times by the number that we've got in stock. So within Excel I would start that process by putting an equal sign in. Now rather than typing in the number I would reference the cell that the number is in. And the way that we do that in Excel is we use the letter at the top of the column and we combine that with the number of the row. So it's a, it's a coordinate. So if I select C4 to now times that, unlike a traditional calculator, I use the asterisk within Excel. So I'm now going to times that by D4. Now at this point, a lot of people would press enter and again, absolutely nothing wrong with pressing enter that would give me the answer, but it would move this box down where the formula currently is. A couple of ways that I can do that and it be more efficient is to either press the tick on the formula bar. If I do control and enter, I now get the answer and it's kept that green box round that cell. Now the reason why that was an important thing for me to do is rather than me come to this next cell and do C5 times by D5, I can go to the bottom right hand corner of this cell where the little square is, I can get the, the smaller plus sign and if I double click my left mouse button now, it fills them all in. But you'll notice it's given me this error message in the last cell. So what it's tried to do is it's tried to times that empty cell by a word here. And in reality this is not the formula we need here. So by selecting that one cell and pressing the delete key rather than backspace, I've now got rid of that formula. The advantage to doing the cells rather than the numbers, so if I do the numbers in the next column, so 22.99 times by one, is first of all, if I was to copy that down as I did with the previous one, you'll see I get 22.99 for all of them. So the answer doesn't adapt. Excel isn't smart enough to know that the 22.99 that I've put in this formula is actually the figure here. Also, if we increase the number in stock, you will notice that the total value goes up, whereas in the one where I just referenced the numbers, it stays the same. And again, same reason it doesn't know that this case the one that's referred to here is the actual value in D4. Okay so now what I want to do is I want to add up these figures. Now rather than sitting here and doing equals this cell plus this cell, Excel has a collection of things called functions so these are more advanced calculations that you can perform. And one of the more basic ones of that is the function of sum. It's short for summary and it allows me to add up. And all I have to do is give it two bits of information. I have to tell it where to start adding and where to stop. Now because this is quite a common occurrence within Excel, Microsoft have actually made a button to automatically make me this calculation. You would find that on the home ribbon over in the editing part of the ribbon and it's this button here. It says auto sum on some computers. Now if I float over it, you'll notice it also gives me a keyboard shortcut for that. So I could press alt and equals and that would do the same as pressing that button. Now if I click on it, rather than giving me the answer straight away because it's, it's guessing what I actually want to do, Excel has highlighted the cells that it thinks I want to add up. So it's saying to me, it's going to start adding from E4 and it will carry on adding all the way through to E12. 
So this time, I'm quite happy with that answer. I'm going to control enter again. So the total now is in there. So in this example, it wouldn't have taken me a long time to add all those items together. But if this was a bigger spreadsheet and there was hundreds of numbers, it has saved me quite a bit of time. Okay, so moving on, if I go to this particular spreadsheet, what I want to do now is work out the cost of delivery. And I'm being told here that delivery is a 5% charge. So what I would do is I would take the price of the item and I would times it by that 5%. So this is a good calculation if you want to work out things like discount, if you want to work out things like VAT or tax, depending on what country you're in. And it's good for commission as well. So 5% of 2299 is pound fifteen. Now if I go and try and copy this formula down as I did before, I get zero for the rest. Now the reason for that is, on the original worksheet, when we made that first formula, it referenced C4 and D4. When we copied it down, Excel was intelligent enough to know that we'd move one row down so to update the cell reference from 4 to 5 for both column C and D. Now within this formula, we've got C4, but we've also got C15 where the percentage is. Now when we copy it down, Excel does exactly the same as it did on the previous screen. It updates both cell references. To fix that problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock one of those cells. So the cell that I'm going to lock is C15. Now to do that, if I click on the formula bar and I press F4, it will put a dollar in front of the C and it will also put a dollar in front of the number 15. So if I move from left to right, C would not become D. And if I move down, 15 will not become 16. Now in reality, with this formula, I don't need to lock column C. It's not going to harm it having it in, but it's not helping either. So to take it down to only locking the number of the row, if I press F4 again, you will see it takes away the dollar sign from in front of the C and leaves behind the one in front of 15. If I was to press it a third time, it would change that to put it in front of the C and take away the one in front of the 15 and a fourth press takes it away. So if I filter through that and get to C$15, if I now control and enter, if I now update the formulas below, they all work now. So each one of those is looking at the appropriate C4, C5, C6, but they're all looking at C15. So if I pick any one of these at random, you'll see it's moved to the right row for the price, but for the discount, it stayed looking at, sorry, not the discount, the delivery cost, it stayed looking at C15. The good thing with that is, if the delivery cost increases, so it now goes up to 6%, I can just change that one figure and I can now get the increased price. If I hadn't have done that and I'd included it in the formula, I'd have to change the first one and remember to copy it down. Okay, so I'm going to do one final simple formula. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add together these two values. So because I'm only adding two numbers together, I'm going to go back to doing it the more basic way. I'm just going to do equals the price excluding delivery plus the cost of delivery. So again, if I control enter and if I use the square and copy it down, I get all the answers. So me personally, when I'm doing this, if I'm looking at using sum, I look at how many numbers am I actually adding. If it's more than two, I use sum. If it's only two, it's just as quick to do the cell plus cell. Okay, so for those of you who are starting out with Excel, I hope you found that video useful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, uh, please remember to subscribe and press the notification bell. 
I plan to put two videos out every week on topics within the Microsoft Office. So quite a lot of Excel ones as most people will have seen. I do ones on Teams, Visio, PowerPoint Project and all the 365 modules. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.